Well, it makes for strange coalitions, and I think it embodies the idea that politics makes for strange bedfellows. For example, on the left, you may have um, traditional unions uh, against the idea of a temporary worker program, but some unions like the SEIU uh, open to the idea of that, in part because their membership would be different, and that would change some of the power dynamics uh, amongst the, the organized labor. On the right, you have um, businesses uh, in favor of temporary worker programs, in favor of immigration reform, but you might have some on the right, most notably some of the loudest Republicans, calling for um, increased border security, stopping immigrant uh, labor into the country. And so it definitely does change the dynamic. Um, you have people on the right willing to cross over and help people on the left. For example, if you have business groups, uh, some church groups, that might be in favor of um, comprehensive immigration reform. And on the flip side of that, you have uh, labor unions and um, some right-wing coalitions and anti-immigrant coalitions coming together to oppose those forces. So it definitely changes the dynamic. It means that you have to cross uh, party lines and uh, to find ideologically uh, similar policy positions. There was such an, an anti-immigrant uh, fervor on the right, and I think that that was uh, something that I know I didn't anticipate when we were looking at comprehensive immigration reform. And I think that it's something that, that flares up and that um, is very unhelpful to a, poli uh, a policy debate looking at something as complicated and nuanced as comprehensive immigration reform. And so I think people need to take a step back from some of the political rhetoric to be able to solve the real problems um, facing the country when it comes to immigration.